It's a perfect song, isn't it? Do you remember when you didn't believe in miracles? Do you remember when it, you didn't understand it was really just a shift in our perception that makes then our eyes see what our heart already knows? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, all the musicians. I know Reverend Rose and I know that that's how we get fed on Sunday morning. And so we're so grateful, so grateful. Do you believe that everything is holy? I invite you to look at it that way as, as, as just something so simple as maybe a um, rocket launch that we're so used to here. As we know, Kayla got to see her very first one. And how exciting is that? And so it helps us remember the truth of all that is, all that's wonderful, and all that's good. So the talk today is love is the answer. Right now, what, what was the question? Because if we can remember that love is always the answer, as I remember, because of course, every lesson we always ever give is for ourselves, yes? And so as I remember that everything is holy now, that everything is a miracle, and that love is the answer, I get to shift my perception. And then my attitude changes, and I'm lighter, more silly, all of those things. I think it's great that we can go on to the website here and see Reverend Rose's talks or anybody who speaks. And so since I've been traveling, speaking at other places, I got to do that and see the opening series of The Best Me Yet. It's quite a year, isn't it? And what Reverend Rose was asking us to do was to bring it up a notch, kick it up a notch, right? And to make an intention with the wisdom of SpongeBob, which means we're gonna have a little fun in it, we're gonna have lots of love in it, right? Probably a little silliness as well. And the intention of knowing that we are powerful beyond measure, as Marianne Williamson tells us, that we're not afraid of the darkness, it's we're afraid of our light and our greatness. And then Reverend Rose reminded us to be present and mindful, to see everything new and everything different, even if it's just the same old drive here on Sunday morning. Maybe there's something new that's trying to get our attention. So yesterday was Valentine's Day, which I rename Heart's Day. And for some of us, there's lots of mixed emotions, isn't it? Some people have said we forgot until it was noon. Others were like, I didn't get anything. And then for others, maybe it's a heartache sometimes, isn't it? We're in a relationship, we're not in a relationship. And what I decided this year is the relationship is gonna be with Therese. I'm gonna have a relationship with myself. So I got myself a little something, dark chocolate something. And that's the truth. So love is the answer. The question is always whether or not or how much are we going deep within to hold true to the intention that we set earlier this month. And then how much fun are we bringing into it as we remember, oh, that's right, I'm here to be the best me. And then you might ask, how would SpongeBob show up as that, right? So today I'm inviting us all to be full of heart and not about all the romantic stuff, but more about how will we create love wherever we go? Whether it's on waiting in traffic, which yesterday or the day before Reverend Rose and I were coming up here to church and the traffic going south was so huge. What's going on on Merritt Island? Aren't you glad that we're already here? We're already here, we already know the secret, right? So, we're birthed in love, yes? And do we know that? Do we remember that we are born in the image and after the likeness of all that is love, all that is good? How many times a day do you invite yourself into allowing yourself to feel that tangible love? Do you feel that as you're waiting impatiently 
at a stoplight or as someone whips by you. I have a cargo thing on top of my car, so as I drive on the expressway, I can really only go 55. And the other day, as I was driving, there was a policeman behind me, and you could tell he was like, what is this lady doing? She's driving so slow. So he followed me for quite a long way on 95 and then came up inside of me and was looking. And I'm like, you know, kind of like my, I've got this cargo thing that doesn't, because the wind gets under it and starts flapping. So one of the words you've probably heard is agape. And if you haven't heard it, it's a Greek word. And what it means is divine or spiritual. And that's the love that is. No matter what happens, it's unchangeable. And really, it could be sometimes and often is interchanged with the word God. It's selfless, altruistic, pure, and unconditional. Would it be okay if that's the only kind of love we ever felt? And so let's start doing that with ourselves today. Unconditional, selfless. So if you didn't spoil yourself yesterday, I invite you to do that today, whatever that may mean, whatever that may mean. Agape is preached and ideally practiced, it says, in all the world religions. It's the real deal. It's the real love. So when we think about Jesus, who we use in unity as our master teacher, our elder brother, our way shower, and I often ask, and what would Jesus do? How loving would he be? Mother Teresa is somebody else that we all would have experienced in our lifetime as she did all her, her mighty love work in India. And I love how Spirit talks and lets us know. Reverend Rose talked about what true courage is, that it's allowing our real self to show up, right? that it's embracing all of our imperfections and it's allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. It's pretty tough sometimes to do that, isn't it? Because we might feel like, mm, what are they gonna think? I might be judged. But in order for us to feel that agape love within, that's what we have to do, is to risk being ourselves. And when Reverend Rose talked about that, that's what we, now we have permission. We can be authentic and real and call each other higher to be that with each other. Rumi, who's a famous poet, wrote this. Your task is not to seek love, but merely to seek and find within, Therese, all the barriers that I've created against it. I had a friend say to me, it feels like you have plexiglass around you. I said, me? She said, yeah. Okay, I'll look at it. And as I started looking at it, I do. And so it's interesting as you talk to yourself and you're like, oh, yeah, in that situation I did, and I did in that situation, and I did in that situation. What's it about? And so the self-awareness helps us understand that. And for me to experience love for me, I'm going to have to let down the barriers, aren't I? And so that's what I work on, because love is the only answer to any question you might ask. So did you know that when you came into this world that you had this stamp on you? It's invisible, but we all have it. And it says, you are pre-approved. Kind of like when we get in the mail, those pre-approved credit cards. And on the outside, it says, you've been pre-approved. I'm not sure where mine is on my body, but I, I know it's there. So say this with me out loud. I am pre-approved, please. I am pre-approved. And we know and we've been told that nobody's opinion of us is any of our business. So then we go back to, oh, I'm feeling judged, so I know I'm pre-approved, and then I get to realign myself. And you know when you get those envelopes and they say pre-approved and you open them up to see what the offer is? There's some conditions, aren't there? Terms and conditions. And in unity, we call those those little bit of seeds of faith or a little willingness. 
And so the first one that would come up would be that we get to know that even if we don't accept God's love, because we've said we wouldn't, or we don't want to receive it because we're mad, or we're not even open to it, we leave those envelopes sealed, it's still there. Bidden or unbidden, presence, love is always there. But one of the things about this year of being the best me yet is to say yes. And yes is your empowerment system. Let your yeses be yes and your noes be no is what scripture tells us. So are you ready to receive some things that you might have plexiglass around or something else? God's love is expressed as good in our lives, as the miracles, as holy moments. It depends on how we perceive them. Are you willing to be as vulnerable as that little tiny mustard seed? Are you willing to will the will of God every day as we get up, maybe sometimes even before we get out of bed? The one, number one term or condition or lily, little willingness of knowing that you're pre-approved is to remember that God dwells within us always and in all ways. What lies behind us and what lies before us is tiny compared to, lie, to what lies within us. Now this has been attributed to Ralph Waldo Emerson, Oliver Wendell Holmes, and Henry David Thoreau. So pretty much it's important, yes? But it doesn't matter. What lies before us or behind us, inconsequential compared to what's inside of us. And then, of course, our, one of our favorite here in Unity is Meister Eckhart from the 13th century, one of those new thought people that we have. The seed of God is in us. I've been able to experience Reverend Rose with Suzanne and with Kayla. Three generations of women, and to watch how each of them laughs alike their giggle and you know I haven't lived with my sisters and my mom for a while and you know since I was a kid but or 18 and and so to watch this and hear and I can't figure out who's giggling you know from the other room because the God seed grows and so for this little love tri triangle right here it's about their laughter that makes me giggle then So all we need to be is dedicated to farming that seed within us. Coming to church on Sunday if that feeds you, to class during the week, have your vows renewed, help with whatever volunteering you might do, and then what happens is it keeps growing. Pear seeds grow into pear trees, nuts grow into nut trees, and God seeds grow into us, as God expressing. The second little willingness, Mary Madden Morrissey says, you can never outperform your self-image. It isn't the temperature of your life, she says, it is the thermostat. It sets the conditions of your life. So how do we see ourselves? Do you see yourself, that, all that, in two bags of chips? I haven't been feeling that way lately. And then, so who did I talk to? Reverend Rose. And so we just helped me shift my perception to let go and know, right? In principle, we say that God's always in charge, right? Well, I was getting in my own way. My big S self was getting in my way. And so as I let go, ah, I've been breathing, and I'm grateful, so grateful. So think about the oak tree. If every day the oak tree said, I don't think that I'm worthy of growing another branch. I'm not good enough. I'm just supposed to have a certain number of branches. And he bemoans his fate. And he doesn't grow branches. I don't think I deserve more branches. 
because I don't know that I should put upon the soil that would have to give me the roots that would enable me to receive the water so I could grow another branch. Trees don't do that. All the tree knows is to grow to grow and to leaf and then to come into a winter time and then to grow and to leaf and then to rest every time a season changes. It never short circuits the divine energy that gives it life that's growing within it. It's a pretty good analogy because there's lots of trees on this island, aren't there? All different kinds of trees. But sometimes we get in our own way, don't we? And we short circuit that. At least I have. Not yet today, because it's only, you know, almost 11. So if an oak tree were human, it might only grow to 10 feet tall, as opposed to how high they do grow. And so our, my invitation this morning is, are you willing to let yourself be the best you yet, to feel worthy, to feel valuable, deserving, just by saying, oh, I'm pre-approved. I am pre-approved. Are you willing to be true to yourself? Are you willing to follow your inner voice? Are you willing to know that the Christ in you is the hope of glory for yourself and for this community? Because that's it. That's the answer. Love. And it allows us this year to step into our potential to be the best we can that we can be. And so I want to read you something from Emmett Fox, who is a very much a supporter of unity. There is no difficult that enough love will not conquer, no disease that enough love will not heal, no door that enough love will not open, no guilt that enough love will not bridge, no wall that enough love will not throw down, no mistake that enough love will not redeem. It makes no difference, he says, how deep-seated is the trouble, how hopeless the outlook, how muddled the tangle, how great the mistake, a sufficient realization of love will dissolve it all. And what I am so honored to witness is that this is how Rose lives. And so in a time of under thinking, how will we fix the septic, do all these things? Somehow, being the minister here and you all being part of this community, someone has yet left you another love offering. And that's what love is. You all in a community. And I am grateful that I am part of that when I am here and blessed that I get to go to other churches as well. And so this year, as we all get to be the best us yet, we say thank you, God, for the love, for the knowing that we are pre-approved. Thank you.